Yeah. I, I, I feel like it delivered on a lot of things it promised. No, I, I do that. And I had no, well, I did have expectations. I expected him to write a good movie. That's what I just said. Well, like, what you gotta do with that shit? <laughs> you always got me petty. <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, is he actually gonna take the high? No, no. No, no, no never. No, no. no. I, hey, look, man, I've been taking the high road the whole time. I, <laughs> oh, oh, you have a time limit? Yes, yes, I do. I try. You're, in my, you're with Michael in that pipe right <laughs> yeah. now. You're under that bridge <laughs> with him right now. <laughs> Doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You've been helping him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, yeah, I tried. This is this is Mark walking through the sewer. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Taking off damn high road. Hey everyone, before we start the review, I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor out there. And we're about to review Halloween Ends. Now, if you find yourself around a big psychopathic killer like Michael Myers, you're going to want to run as fast as you can. You're going to run faster if your feet are comfortable. And hey, while you're running for your life, it doesn't hurt to look stylish too. That's why I want to tell you about these Vessi sneakers right here. I get compliments on these sneakers all the time in the time that I've worn them. But what I really want to tell you about with these sneakers is that... They are made from this really cool material called Dymatex. And what's so cool about Dymatex is that Dymatex is a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summertime and keeps your feet warm in cold weather. And the crazy thing with these is that they are so lightweight and breathable, they don't even feel like they should be weatherproof. Now, that's the big selling point with these is that they're so waterproof. And I said, all right, you so waterproof. Let me try these out. Let me put them to the test myself. I didn't go run through puddles or anything like that. No, I took them to the backyard. I took out the hose and I just sprayed my feet down like I was watering grass and flowers. When I took these off, my feet and my socks dry as a bone. So I can tell you from experience that they are very, very 100% waterproof. So whether you're living in a city where you get a lot of rain or wet weather, or if you're living somewhere else where you got a run errands all day, or maybe you're at a, an amusement park where you gotta stand in line all the time, or you just wanna look stylish. These shoes are very functional for all kinds of occasions and to just make you look good. And that's why I want you to try these shoes out. I want you to get a pair because I've tried them myself. I wear them all the time. People like them, I like them, and I can attest they're very comfortable and they do live up to the word of being waterproof. So here's what I'm gonna do for you. I want you to get a pair for yourself. I'm going to make it easy for you to do that. Go to Vessi.com slash double toasted, and that'll get you $25 off of each pair of Vessi shoes that you order. That's a good deal right there. $25, that's a good amount of money. Save you some money. So once again, I want to thank Vessi for sponsoring this portion of the show. And also, I want to thank you out there for your support. As always, thank you. All right, y'all, let's get into this new Halloween. <laughs> Michael Myers is so old now, he's not even in the movie no more. Mm -hmm. He's like, shit, I'm tired. Let somebody yeah, else do yeah, work. He's old and yeah, those yeah. injuries have finally caught up to him. Yeah, he's like, yeah, my back hurt. Let somebody else go do some killing. <laughs> you know, look, I've been doing this for years. I'm going to sit this one out for a little bit. <laughs> shit, let somebody younger do this shit for a little while. I'll pay him, shit. I don't care. Uh, you know, that's not really, I don't know if that's really a good thing or a bad thing. You know, because people do come to see Halloween to see the man himself, Michael Myers. But one of the things that the directors told people out there, they say, you know what? If you come to see this Michael Myers movie, don't expect to see Michael Myers. <laughs> what the hell does that be? You know, they say, hey, you'll, but you'll see, you'll see, you'll see. But do expect something a little different. And that's not always a bad thing. I mean, you know, and we just got through talking about formulas and whatnot. And people are like, hey, listen, you can only just have a guy running through town with a dirty ass William Shatner mask just stabbing people so much. Mm -hmm. You've seen that over and over again. You've seen it before. You know, you've seen it for decades. We're trying to do art here. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know if <laughs> I know if it's I'm that I'm pretty sure far. those words didn't come out of their mouths. <laughs> it is, I won't say it, it, they went that far, but they did say, you know, we're trying to like keep the spirit of old Michael Myers up in there, but don't be surprised if this goes off into a little directions. And we are prepared for the people out there to complain a little bit, but you know, give it a few years, <laughs> you'll come around and we'll have a cult classic and people say, you know what? They were right. <laughs> They've done that before with Halloween. Could be done again. And yes, there were interviews with the director, David Gordon Green, and his buddy out there, 
was his name? Danny uh, McBride. No, no, what Danny McBride. But they said, yeah, we really did want to kind of get away from the whole formula of Halloween and do a little something different. And not everybody's going to be happy with that. Not everybody's going to be satisfied with that. We're here trying to say something. <laughs> you know, we got we got we got themes that we're trying to play on. One of the people that is back though is Jamie Lee Curtis. As she's like, yes, <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> as Laurie Strode. And this will be her last, as far as for Jamie Lee Curtis, this will be her, she says, she's, I don't know about Halloween, but it, for me, it is the end. Well, I, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> you know, so, uh, let's say CG, I asked her something, you know, who knows, who knows. But she says, yeah, yeah, I'm like Michael, man, I'm tired, you know. You can take a break, but I'm out after this. Did they give her a good send off? I mean, after all. This is Halloween ends. We get one last conflict between Lori Strode and her nemesis, Michael Myers. Is it the payoff that we wanted? Can this really work with less Michael Myers? Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for the highly anticipated end of this particular trilogy. Hence the name Halloween ends. As if I die too, it all ends now. He grabbed that dude by his afro. <laughs> I looked at that. I was like, I'm kind of like, damn, I don't know if that's kind of racist, man. Hey, the afro was there. Yeah, it sure was. And it's easy to grab. You came here to kill me, so do it. Man, you asked. <laughs> Be careful. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> okay. I didn't say now. So this is going to be... Not only in theaters, but also, well, shit, it might be on Peacock right now. They didn't let us Could talk be. about this until the last minute. I think the directors were right. The director and the writers were right when they said, because it's written by four people. And I think, you know, a lot of them were in, in agreement when they said this is going to be very di divisive for people out there. And I'm one of the people that agrees with them. I think this is going to be very divisive for a lot of the moviegoers out there, especially for the fans of the of the franchise. Uh, and I already think that that's because there's less Michael Myers in here. Now, we're not going to spoil anything. I, we were given an email saying, do not talk about specific things right here. So we'll, we will not spoil anything. And then I will tell you this. It is so different that a lot of things can be spoiled. So when you go in and watch this movie, I think it's safe to say that you're going to be surprised whether that's pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised by some of the things that are happening here. But I don't think that I will tell you right now. If, for those who are thinking that less Michael Myers being in here is a bad thing, it could be. I can't speak for you, but I don't think that that's a bad thing at all. I appreciate that the movie is doing something different. Because a lot of people are thinking, well, damn, you know, is this another Halloween 3? Halloween, the barriers will be down between the real and the unreal. Thousands years ago on the hills. Yeah, that's cool. Where Michael at? <laughs> <laughs> this is what would, this had no Michael Myers at all. This is when this was going to be a trilogy. I mean, not a tr an anthology, anthology. Where just crazy things were going to happen on Halloween. Michael Myers was just one of them. This one's about Killer Mask and a evil corporation of, of witches and, and warlocks. Yeah. Uh, that actually has a cult following right now. I like that movie. I, me too. I, I, did I like too. it as well. Yeah, it's just a lot of people didn't see Michael Myers in. They're like, what the hell with this? I can't hang out with Mike. But this is not Halloween three. I've seen some people like compare it to like Halloween three in a way where it's so different. But no, this is this is not on the same level as that. Uh, but it does have almost the ambition of Halloween three in a way. You know, this is this is not a about Michael Myers. And I don't think that after the first movie, mm. you know, the, the 2018 remake, I think they said, all right, we did what, what people expected us to do with Michael Myers and the property of Halloween. After that, they start exploring themes. You know, it, it wasn't about Michael Myers anymore. It was about evil mm -hmm. and what and, and how evil this bad and what Michael Myers can drive other people crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't think that worked too well in the last movie, but I thought it was admirable that they were trying to go beyond, as you say, the shape. Yeah. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> <Okay. Damn> no, <laughs> no. That's what it's listed as in the credits. No, yeah. I know. I'm just joking with him. He knows I joke with him. No, he's right. He's right. The shape. Yeah, they call him the shape in the credits, too. Um. You know, the uh, the bold decisions that they make here, and they are pretty bold, man. The risks that they that, that, that they take could have been great, you know. Uh, but and some of them are. But, you know, what, what did you feel about this? I know we start talking about this. Right. And uh, you yeah. were telling me about it. But, you know, what, just tell me what you feel about it. Well, I know you said you thought this one was, was silly. But I, I like the changes they make. I, I was very much embraced that, oh, this is different. 
this they're they're doing some different things and yeah we we're not focusing on michael for a good chunk of the film it's there's so much stuff i i like that i can't talk about yeah well i can talk about something here i tell you opening up this love that opening man mm. i love the opening of this movie before the credits even roll they do so much with that with they with, do. with those those first 10 minutes of the film i almost stood up and applauded how great that opening was, man. You know, uh, what they do with that opening, they they play with the audience. They play with the audience bad. They're like, oh, you think you know every guy. <laughs> right. We'll see about that. And they're all with me. And the thing about it is, it's just not, that. that's not like they just, they just trick us. It's like they take our expectations and hold them against us, make us feel stupid <laughs> in a good way. Mm -hmm. It's almost like Michael picked us up and just stabbed us, man, because they, they really make you think they're going to do one thing. Or even if you're being even if you're being sort of a snob and you're saying, oh, these jump scares, here we go again. You know, that's like they're doing it on purpose. They're doing it for a reason. Because uh, I was doing that. I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> right. Wait a minute. This is not this. This is not what I think. Even after they're done with the uh, with the with the opening. When we go into the movie. Uh, I I like how they set up Lori Strode and her daughter, Allison here, man. It has a lot of heart. Granddaughter. And, I'm sorry, granddaughter. Her daughter's dead. If you saw shit, well, shit, spoiler, if you didn't see the last movie. That movie sucked anyway. But, you know, this is... <laughs> uh, no, it has a lot of heart with her and her, and her granddaughter. And, man, you know, oh, well, De Deputy Frank at the grocery... Man, I have a scene at the grocery store where it, it take a long time to show in Deputy Frank. I don't know if y'all remember the guy from the last movie, but Deputy Frank, man, it's really nice to see him flirting with Lori. It's very sweet. You know, it's like, cause, cause he, you know, Laura's been through a lot. And he came in, he told, he's like, damn, girl, look like you got your hair cut. She's like, oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm like, damn, this is really sweet seeing this right here, man. Uh, it looks like these characters are given a, a, a long deserved break. Even if it's about to like, even if it's about to go to hell, they're given a long deserved break and a little bit of, of, of human interaction that we didn't have for a long time. Well, especially with Lori, cause she actually gets to be a character again and have a story and a life. Whereas in the last movie, where well, she spent the whole thing in a hospital bed, just yelling. Yeah, she should sure did. In the ending, as far fetched as it is, and it is, but you know, it's, so is it's, a man being shot twenty times yeah, and getting it's, back it's up. It's Halloween. <laughs> yeah, so is a man being stabbed and still running around at sixty five years old. You know, <laughs> so I, look, I'm not gonna complain about that. I'm not gonna say a whole lot about that. Uh, you know, given the nature of the movie, it, it works. Uh, but I, I really like the ending. I would say it would it would even be satisfying if everything leading up to it after the after the opening and then you know leading up to the ending if everything for me wasn't so disappointing you know mm -hmm. the, the the payoff just loses its punch uh i think this is a i think it's a really badly written film and it's in the reason why all the risks they take with this movie everything that they all these bold things that they're doing i have no problem with that i think those things would have been amazing if these, if this movie wasn't written so bad, and the right, the bad writing mainly lies with the characters in the film, man. The, the characters in this movie, they either, they either sociopaths, they're bullies, are they just rude? <laughs> you know, it's, it's just people just being mean in this movie. You know, I, I there was a, that was, I mean, just talking, oh, oh, people just talking shit just a little too much. There's a moment where this guy comes out and says, "Y'all need to get off my property." Before I f y'all up, I was like, we didn't have to go that far with that. Now come on, <laughs> man! Everybody in this town is just—it's just me. I mean, it's part of the you know the evil that spread. It's 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 more rudeness than anything else. But it's all building to something. Yeah, you know, I I I, didn't, I get that. And I, plus, I, I, you know, some of it is these characters have to be that way because you do need people to to kill. And that's my problem. Eat. That is that is my problem with this. Because listen, for the people that were rude, I kind of like that. Uh, again, David Gordon Green often uses 
real feeling people in his movies. And I like that when you use people that don't look like actors. It, uh, Lori came out of, uh, and there's no spoiler or anything. I mean, there's a lot in this movie that believe believe us. We're not telling you. But Lori came out of a grocery store and she was happy. She just got through flirting with the deputy. She's like, shit, I'm about to get some dick, you know? And, and, and she walks out and some woman, and it, it's this black woman, she's like, what you smiling about? <laughs> and, she, and, she, and, I, and I love the way she approached it because it wasn't some, what's some deep dialogue about evil and everything. She said, you look at it, look at you smiling right now. All this stuff happened because you got that man all riled up. <laughs> now look at what you did. And I was like, you know what? I, I, like, I like that. No yeah. black woman messing with her. Yeah, yeah. Why you do that? To, why you get that man all hot and bothered? And I was like, that's cool, man. I like that. Uh, but that's my problem that, yes, we need people to die. So they set them up to be shitty people to the point where it felt fake because they got to have it coming. Almost everybody in this movie has it coming in a way. They do, but I felt that there was a reason everybody was shitty. And and, and it was the town because of how Michael Myers has, has terrorized the town. And it is just this pall that's all over everybody. And everybody wants to blame somebody. No, I got that. No, that, and that's fine. And like, like I said, it's just me. Like this movie's divides. Some other people gonna like it. For me, I didn't mind that. It was just that the, 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 those characters were flat. I didn't. I don't. I don't think there was any. I don't think there was any complexity to them being. You know, these people affected by evil. They just were rude people that needed to die. You know, or or they were set up to be shitty people. Oh, you know, I didn't give that person a raise. Or or most of all, you know, here we are again with the bullies. You know, these they got these bullies in this movie right here. Let me see. I just I just passed one. Uh, Teenagers, in fact. Yeah, you know they. So now, you know, we talk about this all the time. And now it's a big peeve of mine, you know, the, the bullies in here. And it's the same bullies that we see in every movie. You know, one guy and his cronies right down to the guy that wears the letter jacket from, <laughs> from high school. You know, and, 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 you know, riding around, just being assholes. And the funny thing is, is like, the, the, again, we're on that Stephen King level. You know, they're not just mean. They are looking for blood. They're ready to kill. You know, they give it. They, I think they giving Mike some competition. That's why Mike stood back. He's like, "Well, shit, y'all got this. I don't have to be in this movie." <laughs> Even the homeless are assholes, man. And I get it, but it just felt like, especially with the teenagers, it's like, all right, we're going to set them up in the most stereotypical ways. And that's my biggest problem. Now, all stereotypes, the kind you see in every horror movie where it says, oh, we don't want you to feel bad that these people are dying because, see, we set them up to be shitty people anyway. But that's just me. I thought they were terribly written characters in here, man. No, I, didn't, I didn't have a problem with it, especially for uh, Halloween movies. And it's not so much that I feel like, well, you got to give it a pass. But there is, for these horror movies, people want to see it's it's a meat grinder you gotta as much as it's gonna do its different thing it's got to have that stuff there that it will satisfy the people who came to see that and and they gave a reason why these people were shitty and they don't spend a whole lot of time with them so i didn't have that big of a problem with them because they, they they weren't germane to the plot really i mean they were in some way but not not for the most part if i had a problem with anything it was that it didn't make sense why Lori and her granddaughter were still living there. It, it, like, like I was like, I you, you there's no explanation to why y'all haven't moved. Like, it, it, one way to get away from Michael is to just go somewhere yeah. else. Somebody in the chat said it fine. Cannon fodder is fine. It was well written. I just thought it was written badly. Like I understand everything you're saying, and no, I'm no. not arguing with you because if you saw something different, yeah. then that's fine. But you know, I just I, it's like I don't I understand it. With their the reasons, I just think they were poorly written. I think this whole plot is poorly written. Uh, that's one of the things right there where they live in there. You know, I don't understand. I don't yeah, get, yeah, I don't no, get no. why anybody is fighting. Yeah, anymore. Well, especially the two of them, because you go like, not only have you have to survive Michael, but everybody in this town hates you. So there's there's no reason. Yeah. Uh, but and, and even more specifically with the granddaughter, um, no offense to the actress, but there's something that she does consistently in, in this movie. And I felt like they never really sold it. I kept scratching my head going, I don't understand why she's doing this. I don't understand why she's acting this way. And it's one of those where if she was a teenager, it would make sense. Yes. But her being in her 20s, her mid 20s, I was like, I, I, I don't understand this part. And I thought the same thing. There is a there is a romance in this movie mm -hmm. and it don't work. It, and it, it and doesn't it, make sense. It does involve the granddaughter, Allison, who's played by Andy uh, Matichak. And again, yeah, nothing wrong with the actress, but the character's stupid. You know, she falls for somebody in this movie that 
at first it's kind of, okay, at first I get it. They relate because both of them are the town freaks. You know, I understand that, but he gets a little, he starts to get a little more freaky than her. Yeah. <laughs> He's just weird. And, that it, and there's a point where she just starts defending his weirdness. Like they're like they've been married, like yeah. they like they like they've been like like they known each other. They they met. They've been dating for a day. Yeah, and yeah. she's defending him like they've been in a relationship for years. Well, especially since it opens with her and and Lori and they're living together and they're happy. And the minute Lori's like, I don't know about him. Well, f you, Grandma, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. I was like, wow, what? did I miss a scene? What's she going? just says she doesn't even say you know she does say listen I. You know that boy's crazy. <laughs> she said, just, just, just think about what you're doing. F you, you're just like everybody else. So it's like, oh hell, you, you gonna put on a mask too and start killing people? Your crazy ass. There is no, there's nothing to indicate this level of commitment right, right. for this relationship. This right. so-called, they don't even have a real relationship. Right. And there's no, there's no, there's nothing to indicate that level of commitment. There's nothing to indicate that this guy could keep you that long with his charm or witty conversation. Because there's none of that. Right. You know, the guy's just weird. And that particular character who I'm talking about, who I can't say anything that much about, his character arc doesn't make any sense to me. And Michael don't make any sense to me in this movie. Michael's been out of commission for four years. That shit don't make no sense because, because you know, uh, uh, it's been four years that this guy that's been missing that this town hates. You know, this town is, you know, they, this is one where they got, they on Michael watch. And where has he been for four years? Fool's been living in a pipe. Not the, not the sewers. Like I would appreciate if he did some Ninja Turtle shit and was living down in the deep dark sewers, but he's living in a pipe under a bridge for four years. And I know it's been that long because the homeless is kind of, kind of like, oh, every now and then some people get pulled into that pipe every now and then, which is another thing because if this guy, that means that people are still continuing to go missing. Now, this is a town where they on mic watch. Uh, yeah, you, you believe that homeless guy? <laughs> he don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe that homeless guy. Yeah, yeah. The homeless guy, he's he living right, he's five feet away from Michael, yeah. Then how come he didn't get pulled yeah, in there? <laughs> exactly, that's another flaw in the film. Because it's just kind of like, how come, how come Michael ain't <laughs> him? I don't know, but you know, that's another thing to understand. But this is kind of like, Michael has been killing people for years. So, you know, I know this town is scared of Michael, but they ready to mob up on it on his ass too, as we saw. And the police would be looking for this guy. They, they, they have the worst police force in oh, the they, history of police. They, yeah, man. Well, this town is just dumb. I mean, first of all, <laughs> the movie's just written dumb. You know, it's the guys are hanging out in a pipe under a bridge that gets heavy traffic. People, you know, people pass by this bridge every day. We see it, we see the evidence of that on one part. And yet the police, they can't find this guy. People they just ain't stumbled across. Mike, shit, where is Mike? What is Mike eating? Where is he shitting? You know, I don't, you know, I, I mean, I know it's kind of crazy ass, but the guy's been gone for four <laughs> years. Cause I thought, it, write something clever. Like, you know, has he, nobody knows what he looks like. Has he been blending in? Did a crazy person who's like some fan of Mike take him in and just been covering for him, protect him? I don't know. It's been kind of, I think they could have done a lot more explaining Michael's disappearance other than he's just been hanging on a bridge, like red hot chili peppers or some shit, you know, just hanging out. <laughs> And I'm not, and here's my big thing. <laughs> Under the bridge with Mike, I'm gonna kill someone. You know, I, I think also the really the biggest thing that doesn't make sense with me with Michael Myers is that they are flip flopping between what he is, because they keep saying he's a man, he's a man. You ain't shit. You just a man like anybody else. But then the movie still does these supernatural things with him. Of course, but that's been throughout the entire series. Well. No, they set it up in the beginning as he's a man. Now, other series outside of that, yes, but this is differentiating itself from that because they set up in the beginning that, okay, that's the difference. We're setting him up as a man. In fact, we see him at the prison, prison, yeah. the insane asylum with his mask off. So we know he's a man. One of the complaints with the last movie is that, okay, what's going on with this guy? You know, he's taking all these hits. Uh, you know, he, they say that he absorbs power from people. That's how, you know, he gets his strength. But then again, they keep saying he's a man. This movie, they keep saying, you're nothing but a man. Look at you. You ain't shit, you're a man. Well, they were wrong. But <laughs> Well, no, because that is that is something where they they have that. That is the dominant theme here to the fact that they carry that through the whole movie. But there are a couple of supernatural moments with him. And I'm just thinking, make up your mind with Michael Myers. Is he supernatural in this particular series or is he a man? 
I just think they were flip flopping and they couldn't make up their mind. Again, one of the things that I think was just sloppy writing here. I think this movie is a mess, man. I think the, the you know it's it it has its it has its moments, and it has moments where it actually it shows a lot of promise. But I think if the characters were written better, and if they were just kind of even uh, writing Michael Myers better, even with him not being in the movie that much, I think you'd have a much stronger film. And a lot of those things that were uh, that I found flaws with would actually be uh, things that I would actually enjoy a whole lot more if you know if that was the if that was the case. But then, like I said, this movie is going to be divisive for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people will go and see those things that I'm talking about that are good. And that's something that's going to work for them for the whole film, I think. You know, it just depends, man. I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, it's one of those things. See it for yourself. Hey, it's going to be on Peacock. You ain't got to go nowhere. People are like, I ain't got no, I ain't got no Peacock. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think, I think they're, they got it at a discount right now. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because I, I went ahead and signed up for, I was like, man, I ain't getting Peacock. And it was something like, uh, three dollars a month for the next year, and I was like, "Oh, yeah. well, gosh, Man, they're desperate." Three bucks, <laughs> <laughs> and I just I made myself a, a, a note on my count on my Google Calendar <laughs> on this day. <laughs> unsubscribe. Come on, y'all, we're giving it away. <laughs> Please take a feather or something. You know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I think people would definitely feel like me, but I do think people are going to like the movie also. But I, you know, just I got my reasons. You know, I wish I did like it more because I do like that they did a big departure from what we've seen before. Wish it could have worked better for me. No, I, I wish it had too because I, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I know it, it's all about expectations, and I don't come into Halloween movies with a lot of expectations. And some things I know, all right, there's going to be some kills, and the kills were good, even though I don't get off on kills. But I was like, these are satisfying. Yeah. I, I I feel like it delivered on a lot of things it promised. No, I I do that, and I had no well, I did have expectations. I expected him to write a good movie. That's what I just felt. Well, like, why you gotta do that shit? <laughs> you Come always on, gotta man. be petty. <laughs> I, I was I was like, is he actually gonna take the high? No, 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 no never. No, no, no. I, hey, look, man, I've been taking the high road the whole time. I, <laughs> oh, you have a time limit? Yes, yes, I do. I try. You're, in my, you're with Michael in that pipe right <laughs> yeah. now. You're under that bridge <laughs> with him right now. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it. Yeah. I, you've been helping him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, yeah, I tried. This is this is Mark walking through the sewer. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Taking on damn high road. I think people, I like the people who do enjoy it. You know, that's cool. And I, you know, and I and I, I I respect. Let me say this: I respect the movie. I respect people who like it. I respect them that we're doing something different. I tell you, let me just let me say this with a positive. I don't really like this movie. Love the ending. I'm sorry, no, love the beginning. Thought the ending was all right. So that's the thing that kept me from giving this some old bullshit, especially that beginning, man, I love it. But what they are trying, and it might not work for me, and I thought this was terribly written in certain parts, in certain parts, but I will say that everything that they're trying is not for, the characters are cheap, but they're not doing things for cheap thrills. You know, all the other movies are just about popping out of the shadows and killing mm -hmm. and, the, and, you know, and all the you know gruesomeness of it, you know, all that kind of stuff. And just pretty much trying to make a buck. I mean, these guys, I think there is sincerity here with this movie. Yeah, they put mm -hmm. in the work. Yeah. I mean, you might not like it, but they did put in the work. No, I think that they were <laughs> it's, trying. It's not one of those cheap thrown together horror movies. It's mostly jump scares. For people who are looking for Lori Strode to get, you know, to finally get her moment. You know, this, this, this is most likely Jamie Lee's Curtis last time as Laurie Strode. And I think they give her an awesome send off. Mm. You know, I would say that this is uh, it's, it's as far as this is what I like about the ending. There's a lot of things I like about the ending. But one of my favorite things about the ending is that this is giving the audience the climax, especially somebody like me. They're giving them the climax that they've been waiting on for years. In 1978, I had no idea what the worldwide love and affection for Laurie Strode and Michael Myers would be. It will be difficult to say goodbye to Laurie Strode. Oh, damn, they cut that to hear you there. Yeah. Sound like a computer. It'll be difficult to say goodbye to <laughs> Laurie Strode. <laughs> yeah, she must have said something like, it will not be difficult to say goodbye. <laughs> I am sick of this. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you give it, man? Oh, yeah, you know what? I Flaws and all, I think going to the theater, if you're somebody who likes to go to the theater and watch scary movies to be scared, I I, I found it extremely entertaining. It, it, it was a, a low matinee for me. Yeah, for me, I'm the opposite. I'm the person that's going to say, wait for it to be on Peacock, which is where it is, and that's where it needs to be, at least for people like me. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's like I said, man, this is just, it was just a 
few hairs away from being some more bullshit. But, you know, for some of the things that they did, especially in that beginning and that end, uh, you know, that was worth me giving this a, a low rental. I don't think it's a good movie. It's definitely one that you need to check out for yourself. I say don't listen to critics anyway. True. But, but you know, this is something, like I said, I think you're going to see a lot of people. I don't know if it's going to be down the middle and I don't know what side it's going to fall on, but it's definitely going to be, you know, a lot of people going at odds with each other over this. So, hey, check it out for yourself and see what you think. And like I said, it's on Peacock. So, you know what I mean? Well, like I said, people ain't got no Peacock. So <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> and like, huh, get Peacock to go to the theater. Get in the car. Yeah, yeah. I don't know to tell you shit. You know, pop your head through your windows, through your neighbor's window, look at it over there when you're watching it. I don't know. You got a neighbor that has peacock? Go to that house. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah, no, no. So I don't tell you, man. Shit, you'd be better off getting a real peacock. <laughs> <laughs>